welcome to the virtual uh, strand of the UK conference. Uh, maybe it is too loud. There are a number of things I would like to explain. This uh, strand will be all stream, uh, the three sessions. So we are at the moment online. Uh, I hope that, uh, well, I know that there are some people already connecting and uh, they were very interested to follow these sessions from home because they could not uh, uh, be here with us. So I say hello to everybody who is now looking at uh, our presentation of virtual. Uh, I would like to start explaining what's happening today. We'll have, uh, this session is going to be an introduction to the virtual project. Uh, and there will be a small presentation, a general presentation about the project and then the different uh, aspects of it. Then the following session will be a hands-on workshop where we will like to discuss with the participants uh, what they think about uh, the tools that are being developed, what they think about uh, the project and how we could improve it. And then the last session at 4.30 today will be an open round table. We'll have experts and we'll have students and we will talk about how to proceed after this uh, meeting, what, had, uh, what they think about it, how to improve and how to uh, make it better. So if there is no questions about how it's going to be done, I would like to start introducing Rita Falsao. She is the director of e-learning at the University of Porto. And uh, she's going to start introducing all of you about the project. Rita, please. So thank you all for being here. So we'll introduce uh, this first uh, set of slides is to introduce the project. So in general terms, so you know what we're talking about. Um, the general aim of this project in simple words is uh, to allow a learner for any given country to validate competencies acquired in another country and then go to work in a third country. So what it's aiming is uh, for real mobility uh, with the e-learning, the possibilities of uh, having a course taken in some other country online, it's, it's, uh, the opportunities are huge. So, uh, but then how you bring those competencies and get validated in your country or allow you to work uh, in another country and having those competencies also recognized. So this is still uh, a problem. So I'm just having some keynotes from the keynote session. So uh, the first one uh, from uh, Professora Aurel Aureliana Alberici. <laughs> and so I'm hoping to say her name correctly. Um, she was talking about having a common language, and the common language were the learning outcomes. So in virtual, the learning outcomes are also the, co the common language. And then we have some spelling mistakes, so please <laughs> don't worry. Um, there's also a, a common paradigm that was uh, based on assessment. And also here, assessment plays an important role in the validation of the competencies that are acquired. And promoting partnerships for collaboration between institutions. So again, uh, so I was hearing her speak and I was thinking, oh, this is virtual all over. <laughs> so this is what our project is all about. So promoting partnerships between countries that allow that uh, the recognition and validation of the competence is acquired. Uh, also, use Bologna tools and EQF, EQF and ECVET strategies. Again, these are present in our project. So these are also our basic tools uh, to, to achieve this uh, virtual mobility. 
So, um, and the second, uh, the second keynote that was uh, Martin Caret, Caret from Lille. <laughs> Uh, again, I was hearing things and I thinking, okay, Verqual is in the right track because I was hearing learning is everywhere. So, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, learning is really everywhere. And with the uh, online teaching and learning, we have easy access to this learning that is happening everywhere. So students can set up their individual progression uh, in, they don't need to be in, in an institution and continually do this, their studies there. So they can go to multiple institutions, choose the pathways they want. So the place and time is chosen by the student, not only in physical mobility, but also on online mobility. So I can take a course that's uh, going on in US or in Norway or in uh, Australia. Uh, online and this is already a possibility so we, s we just have to make this possible to recognize and validate what has happened. Uh, again uh, Martin was talking about flexibility and new approaches so online learning, distance learning and supported by the national qualification frameworks learning outcomes ECTSs. Again these are key aspects of uh, virtual qualification frameworks learning outcomes and the Bologna tools like ECTSs and the diploma supplement, everything. There are new roles for staff and teacher, but in our perspective, there's only, always also a new role for institutions and even for the students. So students also have to take more responsibility and to increase the transparency of all these things. So it was really important because one of the things Martin was talking about is mainly on the recognition of informal learning. But even when you are going for formal learning, like you're taking some specific course in some areas, then it's not so easy to have these qualifications recognized. So you can put in your CV that you took that uh, course, but then to have uh, it recognized by institution for credits or for prog progression, in a, for further studies, it's still not easy to get this. Um, so this is uh, what uh, Verqual is talking about. The main procedure in Verqual is uh, the common language, learning outcomes. So um, we need to have the courses well defined in terms of learning outcomes so that all people involved know what we're talking about. So, um, so this is the common language and Verqual has defined a way to describe them that is supposed to be standard, a template. Then we need to relate these competencies with the qualification framework. So first with the national qualification framework and the European qualification framework. So when a student goes to take a course that is in another country, he should know how that course uh, is placed in terms of his own national qualification framework. And for that, he uses the translation device that it's EQF. And then through the qualification frameworks, through the, the learning outcomes, and in, of course, uh, by being assessed in a recognized way, he can have the, the transfer of the competencies and have them recognized in their own country, in hopefully in one of uh, the institutions of his country. Uh, for instance, uh, we're, uh, for another another key aspect is the assessment and learning outcomes. So uh, step by step approach, um, we have an example for the European qualification framework, um, and for a, a level six qualification framework. There's a learning outcome that's described as take responsibility for managing professional development of individuals and groups. So we propose a matrix of the assessment of each of the, uh, each of the learning outcomes described in the qualification framework. So these are the assessments we propose, the assessment methods we propose to match to each of the learning outcomes of the, the qualification framework. So we have this type of matrix, much more complete, of course. 
so as an example, we're having afterwards a description of each of these steps um, in uh, the context of the teacher, the institution, and the students, and also a detailed description of the learning outcomes uh, database based on the template that was developed. So this, this is just an overview. So for an example, if an engineer in Italy wants to learn about project management, he can search for options in other European countries. And then he uses Verkle to verify the compliances with ECTS and NECVET, so it should be described in terms of these credit systems. Also, the description of the learning outcomes should be uh, done very clearly, hopefully using our template. That's, this is a, a hopeful scenario. <laughs> That's what we want. Um, and then he, if, if the course complies with the, these previous uh, requirements, then he can choose the, this virtual course, for instance, in France. And he provides, and you can see that this uh, course provides competencies in level seven of EQF. So he, he, can, uh, he can then map that to his own national uh, qualification framework, so the, to the national qualification framework in Italy. Also, he can check um, what assessments of, of what method, methods of assessment of learning outcomes might be used. And then finally, he takes the course. And again, the employer, in the, for instance, in Finland, can check also through the qualifications uh, frameworks where his competencies are matched. So the EQF is a translation device for the contents is acquired, so this should be used um, de facto, <laughs> not as it's been used uh, till now, that's only, almost only political tool, but it should be used as a de facto tool to map and to translate competencies from different um, people. So thank you all. Uh, we'll see now the more detailed version of these tools.